I want to bring in uh, a guest right now, Greg Bastavros. Bastavros. Hopefully, I've got that right, Greg. Uh, he's from Mississauga, Ontario. He's one of more than we think 800 Canadians. There might be more trying to get home from Peru. And Greg, I think you're in Cusco, Peru. Um, how are you doing? Yes, first of all, yes. how are you doing? I mean, we're we're doing what we can with the limited information that we've been provided. Um, as as you guys can tell, the the situation has continued to change very drastically, very rapidly, prompting you know unprecedented uh, decisions that has really put a bind on our ability to get home. Um, we are currently in Cusco. I know that there are three to four hundred Canadians here in Cusco alone. Um, the figure that you mentioned of over 800 Canadians. Um, we have a Facebook group that we had started four days ago that started with 67 people. We're now over 920 people. Mm. And from what I understand, there is more than two or three thousand people that are not in that group, but they are here in uh, in Peru in various places, be it small cities where where maybe air travel is restricted um, or they're in larger cities such as Cusco or Lima, where they're still on lockdown, on quarantine, where the ability to travel both by road or by boat or by plane has been limited. Um, so you know, we have seen. Sorry, go ahead. No, Greg, I was just going to ask you, so you, I, I don't know if you heard the prime minister there, if you were able to hear him saying that uh, they've yeah. got that flight from Morocco and now they're focused on trying to get a flight from Peru and from Spain. What what did you make of, of that? I mean, I'm, that must be good news for you. I, I mean, it, it appears to be good news. Um, given what you had said last night, where the defense minister from uh, here in Peru has basically said that as of midnight tonight, um, or tomorrow, I, I understand it to be this evening, um, they're going to stop repatriation efforts. And, you know, I have stayed in this hostel where I have seen my friends from Mexico be repatriated and, and taken out. I've seen people from Germany be repatriated and taken out. Same thing from people from the U.S. Um, and we're sitting here kind of wondering, you know, we've, we've followed the instructions that have been provided to us. Um, we encourage a swift action in the same way that it has closed down the borders. We would expect the same level of swiftness from our government to help take care of us and help bring us home safely before matters get worse. You know, we've seen this cha this situation get exponentially worse over the last few days. Yeah. And I think we all fear that although there is this hope that there is arrangements being made, it might be too little too late. Can, can I ask, I'm sure lots of Canadians watching you right now are wondering what the heck you're doing there or when you got there or why you decided to leave yeah. the country. Can, can you explain a little bit wh why you're there yeah, and, and why you decided sure. to travel? Yeah. Yeah, you know, we, we have a, a, a very good friend. I'm here with my fiance. A very good friend of my fiance uh, was actually getting married in Lima. Um, we made this we made this trip all the way back in October of uh, last year. And, you know, when we had seen this this situation starting to approach, you know, it didn't appear to be quite as serious as it has been over the last seven to 10 days. Um, we arrived on the 12th, um, at which the only um, warning that was provided to us from our government on our on our travel advisory board was more so based on economic conditions here, but nothing to do with um, COVID-19, nothing to do with any sort of health regulations. Um, and at that point, you know, we, we thought that it would be safe to travel. Um, on the Sunday afternoon, we saw that our foreign affairs minister had basically told Canadians to come back as soon as they possibly can before they maybe do not have the option to do so. I can tell you, we tried to book flights, we tried to get home and there was no flights available, there was no seats available, things I think moved so quickly yeah. that, you know, there was only a few people that were able to actually get out of the country um, before all of this took place. Um, I, I, I should say, let me update some some numbers I've just been given from Global Affairs Canada. It's, you're right, there's a lot more Canadians than, than we have been reporting. They now say that there are 4,300 registered Canadians yes. in Peru. Yes. Um, so I, I don't know that everybody wants out. That's that's not necess that's not assuming that everybody wants out, but there are 4,300 sure. uh, that are there. So so tell me, Greg, what kind of communication have you had then from the guy? I, I assume you've you've registered with with the, the Global Affairs. What kind of communication Absolutely. have you had now? You know, we've we've done our best to reach out to uh, different levels of government, um, both MP as well as federal. Uh, we have followed all of the instructions that have been provided to us by registering with the Registration of Canadians ab uh, Abroad. Um, and they've basically told us time and time again, you know, sit tight. We are 
becoming aware of your situation. We're looking to make arrangements to be able to bring you home. Um, and ultimately, that's I think what everybody has done is you know we've we've sat tight, we've waited to see uh, what efforts are going to be done by our government. You know, and you know yesterday morning Mexico was able to move 13 buses of people from here in Cusco to a small uh, to a small village, which is 10 or 11 hours away, and they all were able to board a flight this morning at 4 a.m. Um, so, you know, was it a glimpse of hope for us? Absolutely. But hearing the the update from the defense minister here in Peru saying that patriation efforts will be halted, um, we're now wondering, you know, what's what's going to happen? Time is of the uh, of the essence. And we're we're hoping that we see a similar rescue effort that we've seen with with uh, Israeli citizens, with Germans, which with those from the U.S., as well as uh, those from Mexico, like I mentioned. How, how are you doing? How are you and your fiance doing, you know, uh, mentally, I mean, health wise, all those things? We I mean, we are we are healthy. Um, I think mentally this is very draining and very stressful. I think being kept in the dark and maybe not knowing what exactly is happening on the back end has kept us a little bit more frantic. Um, there's been a lot of activity, a lot of people that I'm sure are suffering with different, you know, medical illnesses or mental illnesses and things like that, that the lack of communication is just helping, you know, uh, make these things much worse. And ultimately, you know, I'm doing my best to maintain positivity and, and trust in our government. But now hearing this update that this that the patriation efforts um, may come to a halt has put us in a space where we're we're scared. You know, we're we, we want to go home. Uh, well, I, we're going to put some of those more specific questions to the Minister of Foreign Affairs in just a few moments when he pops up. But, but in case he's listening or the Prime Minister is listening, what, what would you uh, what would you tell them? Uh, what, what do you need from them? You know, I I think that Canada is a wonderful country. We are very strong. We have great principles and great beliefs. Um, I think that at this point there is a sense of urgency that is necessary to be able to bring us home before these matters become worse. Um, in the last seven days alone, we have seen two 24-hour warnings that the borders will become closed. And I think that we as Canadians and our Canadian government needs to act with the same level of swiftness um, before many of us are left here abroad, be it here in Peru or in Morocco or any of the other countries that find themselves in this kind of situation. You know, not everybody is maybe eager to get home, but there is a lot of us that want to get home to our families. And the lack of control and the lack of transparency that we've received is, is scary. Okay, Greg, best of, best of Ross. Uh, I think message best probably Davros. received. Best of Ross, thank you. I think message yes, pretty pretty well received there uh, to the government if they're listening. Thank you very much, and my best to you right. and your fiance. You. Keep us posted. Thank you. He joined for us me. from thank All you right. from Cusco, Peru. Uh,